Hello, good morning everyone. Um, we are the YADS group. Uh, we are here on Monday, but today we are, we are going to present a fun skit um, on showing how students process information, how the brain works, um, and to increase engagement in the classroom. So I would invite you to um, ask yourself these questions and try to find answers uh, throughout this skit that we are about to present. Um, what a powerful role of self-concept and learning and how it relates to self-expectations and other expectations of you. And um, try to find evidence of the learning ability of all individuals. And we also hope you discover that um, relevance and emotion play a key role in what students can handle and process in your average school day. <coughs> and also the role of rest in learning, that it's not all about cramming information. So on your one-page handout, you'll find this information processing model. And I'm not going to go through it, but this uh, processing model comes from uh, Dr. David A. Sousa's work, um, How the Brain Learns, and uh, so just a, just a credit source. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is what we're going to be running through uh, in the different scenes you'll see in this, in this skit. And uh, you'll, you'll see the different senses in the environment, the uh, sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste, and how they interact with, um, how they go through the sensory register, to me, <laughs> and uh, how they are sort of streamed through, through this Venetian blind, um, so that they can be processed by the intermediate, and, and the immediate in the working memory. Um, and how that interacts with long-term storage and the retention of students. And it's all regulated by the uh, self-concept. So. And, and so I invite you to enjoy our, our fun and follies in our amazing costumes and <laughs> ad-lib acting. <laughs> Uh, you're going to give you a visual picture of how our brain processes information. It's something that we do a lot of in school every day, each day. One of the great mysteries of learning is how our brain chooses to process or not process information. We're going to give you a few clues as to how it all works. That's saying whether you think you can or think you can't, you are right, by Henry Ford. This skit will tell you a lot about why Henry Ford was, was right on when he said that way before brain research gave information about how the brain works. Some people grow up thinking that they're good or bad learners, and that something about them makes them more or less capable to understand the things. We, we, do, we don't believe that for a moment. We want to share with you the fact that everyone is capable of learning. We all have large and often untapped potential for learning. Unless something gets in the way, once we know what gets in the way, our own learning and learning with others, we can start to fix it. If we can do that, our schools will be places where more and more people can see that academically, and you can feel more in control of your learning learning too. If you'd like you to think about how understanding more about learning means <coughs> you and your school. To begin the story of how our brain processes information, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our environment. They would like you to introduce themselves. sense here, of touch. Hands-on learning is what I do. Forget about all the other senses. If I can't do it with my hands, I don't learn it. So get away, reading, seeing things, I gotta touch things in order to learn. <laughs>
when they tried to steal pickles in third grade out of my lunch bag. So, such a fond memory, I'm going to make sure that I remember to go get pickles. I'm not throwing that one away. One thing about short-term memory is that if there are some emotion attached to the piece of information, we'll have a far greater chance of put, putting it into long-term storage. In most cases of the liver issue, oh, trying to swallow the liver. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> or meeting your best friend over something as silly as a pickle dispute. Without some emotional connection to new information, or something that makes it relevant to me, from within long-term storage, well, it's not likely that I'll put it in my long-term memory vault. Like, I remember I was doing a project from World War II in social studies, and I had to memorize all of these dates and battles, and I, was, and I wasn't doing very well trying to memorize it. So then I had to interview a veteran, and I interviewed my grandfather. And then, all of a sudden, I could start remembering things, because I pictured him in all of those battles, and he was such a brave soldier. Boy, there was no way that was not going to the long-term storage. Not all learning can be that relevant or emotional, though. But the more, the better. That's just the way it is. Make sure to keep these safe. There is just one more thing that I want to return before I hand you off to long-term memory. Do you remember when I said I can only handle about seven chunks of information at a time? Well, I forgot to tell you that when I do learn something new, I really helps to have me time, give me time to make sense of it. And you know, before the new information is given to me, the absolute best would be if you let me sleep uh, after you give me the new information I learned, and it would actually learn better. But this isn't kindergarten anymore, so no nap time for me. <laughs> Just leave some downtime between major lessons. You want me to take it to make space and let me practice the new information that I've learned. So, let me just give you a glimpse of what my day is like. All right, first class of the day. I'll open here. Math. Decimals. Fractions. Multiplication. Division. And then, I'm the science. we got DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out here. we got cells and compounds, molecules. Strike out! Yeah. History! Bacon's Rebellion! Wilmot Proviso! Fellowship War! Lincoln! Lincoln! Oh, okay, the little book here. Okay, so Lincoln Lincoln had molecules.